That's why they call me the hardcore closer. You put me on another fucking planet, I'll sell the Martian something. You know what I mean? Like, that's how great my life was back in the early 2000s. The stripper was like, listen, motherfucker, you need Jesus, and I know just the guy to take you to. Is the real enemy of the United States isn't the far left or the far right or somewhere in the middle or Democrats, Libertarians. The real enemy of the Americans is the media. The way that the fact checkers are changing information on social media and the way that the media like Fox and CNN reports lies. I think a lot of people are very undereducated when it comes to the Bible. And I think it's because we got a lot of people with hidden agendas preaching stuff from it that they're really not sure about. Um, I spent a lot of time in prison and spent a lot of time in solitary confinement. Therefore, I have read the Bible, Bible. <laughs> a couple times. So you think when God created us, he's like, you know what? I want this person. That, you know what? I created this in my image. And I want my image to grow up and be fat and broke and make a bunch of excuses and be useless. That's the image I created ah. man in. Oh, drop it. Never short stopping, now I'm winning like I'm Jida. Steady through the rigor. Yeah, I'm getting bigger. So my guest today is Ryan Stuman, hardcore closer on Instagram and founder and CEO and owner of Break Free Academy. And he was kind enough to have us here in his studio, which is actually two blocks away from our current office right now here in Addison, Texas. Ryan, glad to be here, man. Awesome to meet you. Are you still down on Spring Valley over here? Do y'all still have that space in the we building don't. with the hole in the middle? Exactly. The, yeah. the Morgan Stanley. No, yeah. that was uh, about a couple years ago. Okay. Our okay. corporate home office moved to, to Addison, right by the airport. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah. Very cool, man. Great to be here in your office, man. And you have an amazing story. I uh, had a pleasure meeting you when you're doing, was it your first time doing comedy? Uh, Third time. Third time. So, nice. Yeah. First time I got a little drunk and screwed up, you know, I was a little nervous and I took a couple shots before I got on stage <laughs> and I got up there and they said I did a great job, but then I just repeated myself as if I had never done the stand up in the first place. I don't know what happened because I had a few shots and I'm not a drinker. It's like two or three shots is all it took Good. for me to like. So it happens you have a pure system. Yeah. Yeah. It's like I have a low tolerance, man. And. and but, uh, and I didn't eat because I was all nervous and I wanted to be high energy. Just a bad combination. But they say I ran through the jokes. They were funny and I just kept going. My wife had to come get me off stage. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, but I owned it the next day. Then yeah. I redeemed myself a week later in uh, LA. And then obviously that was the first time in a comedy club though. So that like those folks that were there did not know me. It was like you and two or three other people that yeah. actually had yeah. heard of me at somewhat before. Yeah. Yeah. So it was my first time to go to like a cold audience. I think it was all right. No, yeah. you did good. No, if you didn't say it was, you know, your first couple times doing it, I would have known. So, yeah. so well, that's, that's fantastic good. That's fantastic good. job, man. Yeah, yeah. But my opinion, hardest thing to do is not only public speaking, but the highest form of public speaking, in my opinion, is being able to do comedy because yeah, that's why I do it for sure. I agree. It's a it's a big challenge because you got to create a reaction, you got to engage your audience, you got to keep them you know plugged in, you know. So and you know if they, you know if you failed, if they don't laugh, you failed, right? So, <laughs> you know right there, you know, man. Right then, no instant, response. Yeah, instant <laughs> points on the on or off the board. So yeah. So for purposes of our audience on the Seven Figure Squad YouTube channel, which is a faith based uh, channel of faith based finance. Share a little bit about your story. Share a little bit about your background. I know you got a great uh, video out there from $25 to $5 million. Uh, $5 million. That was a great video there. But, uh, yeah, share a little bit about your background. Yeah, and that's I think that's a few years old, yeah. like five or six years old. You know, I uh, I came up, like most people, lower middle class in, in a crummy neighborhood, you know, with uh, sketchy characters everywhere around us. I, and lots of drugs in our neighborhood and stuff like that. Like, you know, I feel like most Americans grow up in, especially in the South, they don't grow up rich, right? There's generational money up North. Most of us in the South, we're one or two generations into trying to make this shit work, you know? <laughs> and, uh, and so, you know, I grew up in a small town and then, uh, uh, of about 800 people until I was seven years old and I was adopted, uh, by my stepdad and long story short, changed my name, moved into another town of about 16,000 people. So to me, it was a huge city. You know what I mean? 16,000 people. Yeah. yeah and, uh, but it was like 16,000 poor people. It wasn't like, uh, <laughs> like we moved into the city. It was like a rich part of town. And mm -hmm. then it was just like as bland of a city as you could imagine. Right. And so uh, very boring city. Anyway, didn't like school was never really my thing. So I dropped out of school, but I was in the ninth grade and, you know, Part of that was because the kids made fun of me. It's like, oh, you, you're adopted. You know, kids are, they can yeah, be assholes, you know, and, yeah. and it just. Uh, Back then, they didn't call it bullying. They, yeah. Back then, we called it growing up. It's just growing up. And yeah. it's kind of needed, you know what I mean? But in some sense, mm -hmm. it is, you know, we can be assholes. It just, sure. it's kids. That's just, yeah. and I don't even think they mean to be assholes. It's just no filter. 
Yeah, you, right? Exactly, there's, right. There's social the condition and no filter. And so anyway, didn't like school, left school. They, the teachers always said I had ADD and stuff like that. Got a GED. And I had a, a my stepdad, was a very abusive, very aggressive guy. But, man, as a parent, I believe that he spoke a lot of things over me that just became true. You know how somebody, a, a guy will say, my wife always accused me of cheating, so I might as well cheat, cheat. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was always like, you know, you dropped out of school, you know, I had to adopt you, dropped out of school, now you smoke cigarettes, or you're on drugs, you're going to go to prison. I feel yeah. like he just, like, spoke the next step in life yeah. to me, you know? Yeah, and you yeah, don't yeah. realize that as a kid, I mean, like, you look back one day, and I'm in prison for selling drugs, right? Which is exactly what he'd been telling me forever, and I was like, you know, I proved him right. Which was, what good did that do to him or me, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, and I feel like instead of saying those things, you know, as a parent, one thing that, that I, I do for my kids and that you can do for yours is is instead of speaking the things that you're afraid of happening to them, help help encourage them towards doing the right thing, you know? Yeah. And so, uh, anyway, went dead time in, in prison for selling drugs. Uh, first and only time I've done cocaine i overdosed so i haven't tried it again for obvious reasons sure. but i don't think i think i'm allergic to it or something uh or maybe god knew that i was really gonna like it and he's like let's just make sure that he don't go down this path so either way uh, me and coke didn't get along and i caught a charge for selling drugs i went and did two years in state prison and was transferred around and stuff and i got out and I knew that i didn't want to go back there I went and got a job working for my stepdad. He worked for a car wash. Like I told you, we were a poor family, so he worked mm -hmm. for a car wash as a manager. And uh, I started out vacuuming cars and worked my way up to managing one of those locations after a couple of years. And crazy enough, I get a job working in a bank. But because here's what I knew. When I got out of prison, I knew I didn't want to go back in there. When I sold dope, I wanted to be like the biggest dope dealer. I want to move keys and be like mm -hmm. Master P because I'm I'm old. That was our influence back then. Gotcha. And and then when I got out of prison, it's like ain't cut out for that, <laughs> right? <laughs> like nope. Yeah. I'm I'm gonna go wash cars. And so I'm you weren't be, good taking cocaine, nor yeah. were you good at selling it. Yeah, so you're just not built for the drug. Just business. not built for the yeah. the consequences that come sure. along with it, right? Yeah. Me and you fail in business right now. It's like man, we gotta buy a smaller house and get rid of the car, right? But like it's totally different consequence in yeah, that game, time. you know. Yep. Uh, it's your life. And yeah. so I realized that wasn't for me. Uh, but I'm going to be the best car wash person where I got one shot and one shot only. If I become the best car wash person, maybe I can get sweat equity. And I didn't know those terms then, but my mind was like, maybe they'll let me own part of it or mm -hmm. work my way into mm -hmm. it or something, right? And so I get out, and I learned everything about that car wash. I mean, every screw, every every fixture, every mixture, every inventory. I mean, I knew everything. I was like the car wash savant, right? After about six months into this thing, I'd be take on rainy days, I'm taking apart, putting it together type shit, right? Okay. Um, customer noticed that because hard work doesn't get pat on the back, but it, it eventually does not go unnoticed. And eventually it can't be ignored. Like if you're somebody and I see you every day, I go to a restaurant for years and I yeah. may not see nothing, but every time over the years I see you working yeah. your ass off at some point, I can't ignore that. Sure. And neither can the other patrons. At some point, somebody's going to go, that's the person, that's the hard worker that I'm going to give a shot to. And that's what happened to me. A lady offered me a job in the mortgage business. And she said, it goes just like this. I'm standing at her window. She says, I come in here once a week, you write, you sell me something I don't need. Then you vacuum my car and half the time you wipe it off out front. Does anybody else work here besides you? Nice. And I said, yeah, but you know, I get paid based on performance. So the less people on the clock, the more money I make. So I'm willing to do the work. She goes, I'll give you a job. You make six figures a year easy. And I said, uh, I was making 40 grand a year max at yeah. this time, right? Yeah. So six figures a year. What do you want me to do, lady? I'm like, I'm not selling drugs again, damn it, right? <laughs> like, what do you want me now to do? I'm going back in, right? She goes, I'll teach you mortgages. Never heard that word in my life. Never in my life. And I'm she like, didn't even spell it. what is that, right? <laughs> sure didn't know there was a hidden G in there. You know what I'm saying, right? Like, what, what, what is that? She says, she says, uh, you know, like home loans. You go to the bank, you get a loan against your house. Oh, man, I don't have a credit score. Or any, I own that truck over there for cash. I paid 500 bucks for it. I yeah. pay money order for my apartment. Like, I'm not the guy for that. You know, instantly, I start deselling yeah. myself. That's yeah. what we do as human beings. Oh, no, yeah. that's way out of my... Out of my league, right. She goes, I'll yeah. teach you, and uh, I'll teach you how to do everything. She goes, you'll be fine. And it's good that you don't know, because I don't have to re-teach re you stuff. I said, well, I have a felony. She goes, oh, shit. What'd you do? I said, I got caught selling drugs. She goes, oh, hell, you probably fit in just fine. You won't be the only one. You know, we're bankers, right? Maybe meet some new clients if you're still into that, right? And so I quit that day, went to work for her. Within three weeks, long story short, I made about 20 grand, right? Like I got, you know, 
what used to take me half a year, I make within a few Clear to months. close, baby. You know yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And, and it was by accident and all this. And go on to make a whole bunch of money, buy a big-ass house, and the feds raided my house. Or the cops in this small town that I lived in raided my house. They thought I was selling drugs again. Oh, jeez. You know what I mean? Which makes sense. We Fell in. Couple, yeah, I was, I was off parole. Oh, off but, parole, though. But yeah. I'm an early adapter, so I was running office work from home before the COVID. You see what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> like so 12 years ago. 2005, <laughs> I was doing, yeah. I learned how oh, to wow. hack into the the bank server, had an IP, uh, an address, a URL. So I would just log in from home to their URL and take applications from home. I own 32 rent houses, right, that I had loans against. Because remember, in 2005, it was just like sign ninja, and drive. Ninja baby. loans, yeah, no income, sign and drive. no job yeah. approved, right? Exactly, yeah, yeah, right. exactly. So in all these houses, I had, you know, a few houses that were 300, most of them were 50,000. So I had poor people coming over paying me rent because back then we didn't have Zelle and auto draft and all that mm -hmm. stuff, right? Mm -hmm. You don't want to wait for checks because they mail them on the first. You don't get them to the tent back then. So poor people coming by first of the month, dropping off rent checks, real estate agents coming up, picking off. So the poor people come over in a beat up ass Honda Accord from 1987. And then the real estate shows up in a 2005 S series Mercedes. I got a lot of traffic at my house. I'm collecting real estate checks, but I get it. The cops thought I'm selling dope again. Here's this convicted felon, nice house, lots of traffic. You know what I wow. mean? Like bad, sir. so they raid my house. Don't have any drugs, right? At this time, <laughs> man, I was going to church, all the stuff. Like I, I mean, far yeah, 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 from yeah, a yeah. drug dealer. I'm yeah. like, thank God that I'm in the position I'm in. Um, didn't even have any sandwich bags in there or scales. <laughs> like I don't want no mistakes. But I had a gun, and in Texas, it's legal to have guns, and I beat the case. Uh, they charged me with felon possession of firearm. There's some rules in Texas that allow me to have that. I beat the case. The sons of bitches turned me over to the ATF, oh, which does not recognize those rules. It's kind of like in Colorado, you want to sell weed, totally legal. But if the DEA picks your ass up for yeah. selling weed, it is not legally federal. And there are some agreements between the state, and the, but if the DEA don't like you, they can come get you if they want you. Right? right, and the state would be like, "Hey, we don't want no beef. We need yeah. them federal funds, federal overrides." Yep, yep. exactly. Uh, that's what happened to me. Went back 15 months inside federal prison. Wow, for possession of a weapon. Yeah, wow. That that I thought was totally legal. Yeah. you know what I mean. Like yeah. you know, and so, uh, man, lost everything. Wife left me while I was in there, sold all my properties, left Jeez. me for the landscape dude that managed the, that <laughs> mowed the yards for the, I Jeez. mean, just like twist the knife and then like, yeah. you know, just, just yeah. terrible. But I knew two things when, when I was in there, hey, I got 15 months to read a bunch of books and get smart, or I can complain about my situation, or I can use this to better myself. Yeah. I can get in good shape again and I get in these books and learn business mm -hmm. because it looks like the mortgage industry is crashing while I'm in there in 2007 yeah. Yeah. and I need to learn business and do something different. How much did you spend time in your first, your first, your first uh, two time? years, the first time, two years and then yeah. 15 months after yeah. that. Damn. So I'm three, I spent all my twenties in parole probation or on in prison, man, my whole twenties. Most people are like, damn, you was making money in your twenties. You was probably out there banging all these chicks and stuff. I'm like, dude, I was banging shit literally <laughs> nothing banging freaking cell doors you know banging my head on the wall you know i used to talk about my for me my my personal stories my entire 30s went back to paying the mistakes of my 20s and i always say there's always somebody worse out there yeah well today i met that person yeah i'm here <laughs> hey we're here you know and but there is there's this this recurring theme in my life that i remember in 2005 after i beat the state case and a couple weeks later, or a couple months later, I was served papers letting me know that the ATF was investigating and they could possibly pick it up. I remember going, you know, God, I go to church, I tithe, I don't cuss, I talk like Ned Flanders. I, I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm living out my dream. I'm helping people. I'm not doing mortgage fraud. I, like I don't, I don't understand, man. Yeah. You know, like I thought we were past this, man. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And you, then you go through a phase where you curse God, like you son of a bitch. I was doing everything right yeah. I mean, you know what how, how the hell mm -hmm. even why, why would they do this to me you start yeah. then you get the victim phase mm -hmm. like maybe i'm just a loser you know and and i look back 20 years now that's almost been and, and i look back and i was like he had to remove me from those relationships in those situations or the steps to get me where I am now would have never been laid out. He was paving a road with a better picture than I was even dreaming of wow. back in 2005, wow. man. I'm thinking of in 2005, he, 
But if those people were still around me and they weren't bad people or anything like that, the ex-wife, she wouldn't have been riding with me today. She'd be taking tens of millions of dollars from me instead of a few properties. She'd be taking hundreds from me, right? He knew that, the only, and I'm a loyal person, so the only way to separate me from those people is to really separate me wow. from those people, right? Wow. But at the time, I feel like this big-ass victim, man. Like, why are you doing me like this, right? But now in the past, I'm like, man, this is the biggest, I owe you, man. Sorry, I will <laughs> never doubt you again. You know what I mean? Yeah, I will yeah, never yeah. doubt you again. And that changed my perspective because now when some shit shows up in my life, it's like, oh, man, we're about to get it. I know what's coming. I get excited. You know right. what I mean? It's it's right. not a, oh, man, this again. It's like, oh, next level's coming, right? right I, there's right, always right. a blessing at the end. These struggles always come. Yeah. Just like the gym, you know, when you're struggling doing that that deadlift or squat or bench press or whatever, you struggle your hardest, you finally lock it in place. You're like, yeah, I got it. Next time it's easier, man. Yeah. You struggle, you beat it, you yeah. know? Yeah. It's the same thing in life. And I look back at... All of these times that I had struggled, and I could list out a hundred more, but it would take the whole time. But each time I realized that all that struggle was doing was laying another piece of pavement to the path that I had to get. Because now where I am is rainbows and sunshine. You know what I mean? It's like on any given you know day, I can I can do whatever. Like yeah. I'm in private jets every week, two, three jets a week. I've got a fleet of Lamborghinis. I've got everything that I have ever dreamed of wanting, doing, possessing, having, I got it all. Like I would not trade my life or the experiences that I have. Cause I got some great stories, yeah, right? Yeah, sure. But I wouldn't trade any of that with anybody like Jeff Bezos could walk in right now and be like my bank account, my girlfriend for your wife and your life. And I'd be like, I'm not interested, bro. I'm kind of having a good time over here, you know? And not too you many can't people be bought. can say that, but I really, and that is a big that is, a, I don't need the extra money. I don't mm -hmm. need so I can make my own rules and truly be a, a free person because I know what it's like not to be free. Yeah. A lot of people run around saying, oh, we ain't free. It's like we're in prison. Nah, bro, it ain't nothing like we're in prison out here. I drove to work today in a Lamborghini with a Rolex on. Those two things do not exist behind the walls in Seagullville, the last place where I was at. <laughs> I promise you. And I got laid yesterday, right? Probably will today, too. And I'm sure you can get laid in Seagullville. I never did that, but I don't recommend it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> exactly. With the partners you would have. Uh, let me, let me Go, let me unpack a little bit about your story. It's freaking hilarious, bro. Let me it's unpack a, a little suitcase. bit about your story. <laughs> What was going on in your head, though, when you're in prison? Because it, it's just dead time. You know, you're there. It's a daily routine every day. You want to express yourself. You want to break free. You want to break loose emotionally, financially. But you can't because you're in prison. You're physically in prison. So what is going through your head? Because that could be a very self-defeating time. Well, the first time, it's, you know... I don't even really remember, right? Wow. It was it was a very they transferred me to seven, six or seven different places. Like, okay. you know, you have the scene where it's like the dude walks to prison, like, yeah, you're mine. How did you do that at seven different places? I weighed 135 pounds, white guy, 19 years old, right? I was like skinny kid still. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I didn't even grow a beard, bro, till two <laughs> years ago. I'm 42. You know what I mean? Like, it's a hormone replacement therapy and everything for this shit to sprout. You know what I mean? So imagine me at 19. Yeah. I look like a 12 year old, probably. Mm -hmm. and, and I was look like a golf ball sitting on a tee. I was so damn skinny. Yeah, yeah. And, and I got to go to seven maximum security prisons. Sheesh. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it, it was, uh, it was it, the good thing for me though. God always has a plan. Mm -hmm. It's not snitch on nobody. I didn't commit no crime where I robbed anybody or hurt their mom or hurt somebody or raped somebody or touched a yeah. kid. Yeah. I had a drug overdose where they caught me with drugs and I didn't snitch on my plug and I did my time and took my sentence like a man. So I didn't have a whole lot of static because when you get in there, they pull your paperwork. Sure. And as long as I didn't, and, and I knew the rules, as long as I didn't owe you gambling, you're bigger than me. Mm -hmm. As long as I didn't owe you gambling money or mm -hmm. say something disrespectful mm -hmm. to you, you've already seen my paperwork. You got no beef with me as long as I'm not doing nothing to gain attention. So I just mind my own damn business, got in a few fights, but was an easier time because of that, right? Had I snitched on somebody and they owed me somebody, I had to click up with the Aryans or something, right? Wow. And that would have yeah. been, that's not yeah. how I roll. But Got sometimes it. in there, those guys don't have a choice. You know were, you, I mean? were you getting recruited? Hell no. They didn't yeah. have anything to hold over me. Got it. Right? There's no Most leverage of, on you. There's no leverage. You snitched yeah. on them, blah, blah, blah. It's like, hey, I got two years. I didn't do shit. I'm yeah. not in your way. You know. There wasn't a conversation. Hey, bro, listen. You know, this, oh, in this, the beginning, this, this, absolutely. Yeah, because you're like this skinny kid. You need protection. Absolutely. In the beginning, the uh, Aryan circle, they were yeah. called in that that particular prison. Yeah. They called me over. <clears throat> like, you know, man, you got to be one of us. Black guys yeah. tear you apart in here. It's like, yeah. I'm going to take my chances. And then they sent 
two days later, two of their guys to fight me. And <clears throat> one of them I beat up. The second one got the best of me but because I had already fought the first one. I know there was going to be a second round or I wouldn't yeah. have given the first one my all. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, like there was second surprise, one, there was the third one. Yeah. Bitch, right? Like, yeah. But anyway, uh, and I probably did let the second one get the best of me, so I'd have to fight another third one too because there was a down. bunch of them. Yeah. And uh, But that was pretty much the end of it. you know. And they were like, hey, well, we'll just throw you to them. you know. It's like, but I didn't have a problem with them. You know right. what I mean? Because I wouldn't, you know, I had a problem with us. The yeah. only people only people I had a problem with were the white guys, so I wouldn't join yeah. them. I didn't have any dealings with the Bloods or Crips because I wasn't gambling, I wasn't on drugs, any of that shit. So, wow. uh, <clears throat> yeah, definitely. Answer. Federal prison, nothing like that. Yeah. Nothing like that. So what happened in federal prison is I know one thing. I got to get, I can't do this shit again. I'm lucky I got 15 months. They tried to give me 20 years. I did some really complicated shit that didn't involve snitching or anything else. I got my lawyer elected as district attorney of Dallas County. You know, dude, I've had a crazy life like Forrest Gump and, and Joe Dirt. More like Joe, Joe Dirt than Forrest okay, Gump, okay. right? But, <laughs> but, uh, but so I got my attorney, helped get my attorney elected as the first black district attorney at Dallas County. He was wow. a Democrat. Sorry about that. It wasn't the same back then as it is now, so forgive me. But he um, he pulled some strings for me, got me a lower Senate, so I go into Seagoville, 15 months, craziest shit ever. I'm in, I'm in there two weeks, and I'm in line for breakfast, right? And I remember this day clear as a bell. It just rained. Mosquitoes were everywhere. It's like July, end of July, sitting in lights, damn mosquitoes. And they got these mosquitoes that when you slap them, they slap you back. <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah. <clears throat> Some of them be holding your hand. They'd be like, not nah, today, motherfucker. Right? Like, it's, it's, it's crazy. And so <clears throat> there's two big Puerto Rican dudes in front of me. Yeah, I recognize them. They're the gang guys that I used to sell drugs for in the 90s. You know what I mean? Six, seven years ago. Wow. So I tap them on the shoulder, and I was like, hey, Angel, you remember me? Of course he doesn't remember me. He's been locked up this whole damn time, mm -hmm. right? But he's like, no, white boy, what, what do you want, man? <clears throat> and I said, uh, hey, man, it's Breeze. Um. Uh, I used to sell drugs for you in like the 90s and 1999. I went to prison, but I didn't snitch on any of you guys. I was out in uh, Allen in Plano back then. You remember me? He's like, oh, yeah, man. I thought you was going to clean up your life. You told us all that you were supposed to clean up. You've been buying dope from some. So they're, now they're mad. They're like, oh, you've been buying dope from somebody else? You know what I mean? It's like, how the fuck you wind up in here? Mm. And you told us a few years ago that you cleaned your life up, right? So even they're holding you accountable. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and and so they they were in a different building than me. There's seven yeah. buildings on this compound. They're yeah. in a different building. But I told them, it's like, no, nah, I wasn't like that, man. I got a job as a banker, and they got me with this fucking gun. So I'm telling them the story uh, uh, in, in line, right? Uh, uh, and they're like, you used to be a banker. They're like, all right, we got something for you. Fuck. So about an hour, two hours later, I'm in my cell and I have a cellmate. And coincidentally, I did my cellmate. I refinanced his mom's house in the free world, like not even knowing him. And his mom found out that I was a cellmate. She's like, oh, my God, that guy did my loan. He's a great guy. How is he in there? Right. So so we're like instantly friends. You know wow. what I mean? And, and got an You're end. silly. Yeah. But of all people in federal prison, he's in there for meth and drugs and shit. And he's like, my mom said you refinanced your house, bro. <laughs> oh, that kind of conversation is that. But so I'm in the cell with this guy. And... uh and so he, uh, there's this big, huge Mexican dude that comes and knocks on the cell. Because it's, it's a cell, but it's like a dorm cell thing. It's a solid door, but don't have a lock or no shit on it, right? But he mm. knocks on the door out of respect. And my celly opens the door. It's like, what's up, man? And the guy's name's Juan, but I don't know who he is, right? And he's like, what's up, Juan? And uh, he's like, which one of you guys, he don't know my celly. He's like, which one of you guys is Stuman? He's like, well, it ain't me. You know, it's kind of like throws me under the rug. This dude's big. Like, he's bigger than you with teardrops, like, all the way Dang. down to his ankle. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? Been there forever, bro. Yeah. And he's like, come with me. So he, this building I'm in is two stories, so it takes me up the stairs. And over in the corner, there is uh, a cell because the corner cells are the biggest one. And there's like two or three dudes in there, man. And they're wearing watches like what you got on. In, in and they got Air Jordans and what? shit. They're smoking weed. I'm like, damn, shit's way different on the second floor than the first floor, man. Y'all got women up here too somewhere, right? Like, like they're living in. So this is how they get you, right? Like you come up here and now you owe everybody money and shit. I see how the game works, right? And they said, uh, hey, you know, we heard that you did some banking stuff. And uh, it's this, this head cartel guy and he's a mexican dude and he's like he's like hey man we heard that you do some banking stuff man we got some money that we need to get cleaned up yeah, yeah. before we get out of here we heard that you know real estate shit like that can you help us clean up our money if you can uh things will probably be a good time for you in here right he didn't give any all terms like if you can't we kill you it was just like if you could things would probably be a good time for you in here and i was like 
So you tell me you want to launder money. That wasn't what I got convicted of. But I do know how to do it. I mean, what the fuck are they going to do? Put us in prison? So what you got, you know? Okay. And so these guys start laying out, like, how they got the money and where it's ca- cash and where it's at and stuff Uh-oh. like this, yeah. right? And, and like, not where it's at as in, like, we buried it here, but, like, yeah. hey, we got, you know, yeah. this thing and this is producing. But cool, well, who do you know in the neighborhood that owns a restaurant or that owns their mom's house that you can go make a cash transaction yep. where they keep the cash and now you're on record and you can refinance. I'm just telling them right. like, you know, ways to, to move that money around without it and how to pay taxes on it. So the, the, that it ain't illegal money anymore. So right? for the purpose of our <laughs> subscribers, that's, Money laundering. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. Absolutely. I mean, like I said, in this this particular instance, we are in prison, so it's like the 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 consequence of the outcome has already been established. So there's really nothing they can do. And I'm just giving them information. I'm not licensed financial anything. Right, right. Uh, clearly, you shouldn't take advice from a convict that's in prison with you. But they did. But what's funny is I also did uh, loans for the warden. I also did loans for some of the guards. And so, cause I would send them to my friends on the outside that would what? take care of them because all the inmates were talking. So. So after I, I help these guys out, give them some information, tell them some books to buy and yeah, shit, right? Yeah. Go back. What, to, what, what did you tell them to read? Uh, so Think and Grow Rich was okay. the very first book that okay. I told them to read. It's like, hey, man, you guys need to read Think and Grow Rich. Okay. And then you need to read The Millionaire Next Door. Okay. And then the third one was um, uh, the, the Rich Dad Poor Dad. Of course. Right? Yeah, so, like, yeah. you know, these are brand newbies. They've never even heard stuff yeah, like this. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's where everybody yeah. starts. And I'm like, dude. You guys think gang shit's cool? Oh, wait till you fucking read this. You know what I mean? Like, cause, and, and it is. All of yeah, a sudden, for sure. it changes their mind, right? Yeah. Cause here's the cool thing that dude that just sat my lunch down is that cartel guy. The guy that just walked into the office and said, here's your lunch, and sat it down on the bench right there and then picked it up and walked it to my, my office is that cartel guy that was sitting in that cell that day. Now, he is my CTO here and probably the best website guy you'll Crazy, ever find in the world, really? right? Makes wow. multiple six figures a year working here, yep. right? Totally li- drives a Maserati, t- owns a car dealership too, totally lives yeah. a legit life, right? Cleaned mm-hmm. up his money, got those houses, right? So, <laughs> but, but the thing is, and for the first time in his life, last Tuesday flew on my private jet to New Jersey. The only other airplane he'd ever been on is Con Air when they were moving him around <laughs> because he was the cartel leader and the boss for all the Mexicans in the federal prison system, right? Who's just walking around by here? His brother was murdered by the state for killing the cop. Like, he's he's 17 tons of cocaine charge. Like, he did 17 years in prison. Like, it doesn't get any worse than this guy's character on paper, right? Sure. Um, But those books and meeting me and those seminars, and the because what happened is uh, after we, the, the Mexicans were like, hey, man, homeboy, the white dude knows his stuff. Then the Muslims come up, which are black guys in prison. They're sure, usually yeah. not Arabs, right? right? They come up and they're like, hey, man, we're trying to do the same thing. The Aryan guys, hey, man, we're trying to do the same thing. So what's crazy is I'm uniting the country like Joe Biden. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm <laughs> yeah, uniting. Yeah, you, you get the joke because you were there. Uh, I'm uniting the country. And, and Let's go, Brandon. Yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm, exactly. That's the only president in history that everybody's cheering for the same thing. So. But I'm putting the, the the people that normally wouldn't be together or have anything in common uh, together, and yeah. and they're ha- they're networking and it's like, oh shit, well you know we got trailer houses here, or we got houses in the hood here, oh my gosh. and so it's it, huge. There's no fights on the compound it's the huge. whole 15 months I'm there. The whole 15 months there, there was I'm sorry, there was one fight. It was because they brought this child molester guy in that somebody knew. Uh, and that that shit happens, of right? Uh, <clears throat> and, and, yeah. and it wasn't a fight; it was a stabbing. But yeah. you know, and, and, <laughs> and but that's just part of that's the risk you take sure. to touch kids, in my opinion. Oh, of course. Um, but there was no gang fights or anything like that, right? Surely people argue Probably. over TV and stuff. But what that a great pause button right there. The reason why people are fighting because they're trying to steal from somebody else. Absolutely. Because someone's showing them how something. they can get everything. But if you educate them, or you make them aware, you educate them. You you, you show them books. You show them how to. You give them the awareness, you give them a shift in a, in a mindset. It's amazing what you just said, how it doesn't matter what religious background you came from. It doesn't matter what the color of your skin was. It doesn't matter where you, where you came from, your socioeconomic upbringing. Yep. But you educate them about money. Yep. You, you, you unify them on something that everybody wants. They want, everybody wants financial success. And you're able to put those relationships together for 15 months there is peace. Yep. Wow. No right. gang fights. Shh. No arguments. Nothing. Right. 
Um, I'm doing loans for guards and, <laughs> and, and, and inmates, <laughs> you know, and their parents. I'm sending my buddies on the outside. Nothing deals. was stopping you, man. Man, you know, and think about it, man. The mortgage market was falling apart, and bro, I'm prospecting in prison. That's why they call me the hardcore closer. <laughs> you put me on another fucking planet, I'll sell the Martian something. You know what I mean? Like they, we go into Middle Earth, them motherfucking ugly things from Lord of the Rings are buying shit from us, bro. We gonna make it out, but we gonna deliver good shit that they that's gonna make their life better. They just gonna have to pay for it, you know? Yeah, sure. Yeah. We, and, and no telling how many tens of thousands of people been affected because this guy comes out, lasers off all of his shit, wow. doesn't fucking go snitch for the government or yeah. anything like that, gets a real fucking job, work for me for minimum wage, just like I started at the car wash, and mm -hmm. now the dude probably makes 10 grand an hour building funnels. How long is that time frame? Give me a chronological. He got out in 2015. So wow. six years. Six years. So yeah. there's a problem today. A lot of people think instant success. No, six years. Yeah. Started minimum wage. Yeah. Dude calls me and says, hey, man, we got money. Yeah, we yeah. got our shit handled, yeah. but I need a job. Ain't nobody going to hire me. My brother killed a cop. I got all this. Yeah. Like, nobody's going to fucking hire me, man. I yeah. will come work for you. I got to make a paycheck uh, yeah. because my parole officer is watching, but I'll come work for you for right. whatever minimum wage is, man, and I'll work, I'll work extra hours. You don't need to pay me overtime. Like, I'll do whatever the fuck it takes, and that's yeah. the attitude I like. Yeah, hey, yeah, well, that's yeah. the magic words. I'll do whatever. All right, cool. You say you do it. Show me. However, I did see the way that they did their work ethic in prison. They didn't just come to these seminars and listen. They were implementing. Right. So I'm like, hey, you come up. So I did the, what I think is really cool. I said, listen, man, I'm out here selling these websites to the loan officers at the time. And I said, I'm having to make them. If you yeah. can learn how to make them, this motherfucker ain't logged into a computer. They didn't have Google before yeah. he went in. He was 17 years inside. Like yeah. Google didn't exist then, right? <laughs> and so uh, neither did Yahoo or hell, yeah. Apple computers at maybe, that maybe point. A yeah. Maybe AOL yeah, or yeah, we were, people, Friendster's page. Maybe dial up back then. You yeah, know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, and yeah. so. So he, I give him some trainings from like Russell Brunson, Frank Kern, like typical yeah. website guys. Funnel, funnel and, hacking stuff. And he stuff. takes them, you know, and then yeah. he comes and hey man, I built this website. What do you think? You know what I mean? Like so many people have same access to those courses right now yeah, or do, YouTube do video with it. and never do nothing with it. But he came in, he's like, hey man, I built a website. What do you think? I think it looks like shit, but you got a website. We got somewhere to start. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And now, like I said, there was a lady that left here just, just for you that paid him 10 grand for a website that probably would take him 30 minutes to build, you know? But, but he doesn't get paid for that 30 minutes. He gets paid for the six years and of the course. million dollars I probably have yeah. invested in into his knowledge learning this stuff, right? Yeah, so. building a skill set, finding what works, what doesn't yep. work, you know? But he drove up here today in a brand new Maserati with the dealer plate still on it, and he's driving it legally, and it's in good standing with his parole officer. He's got no problems, no dope, like no drug shit, no yep. gang shit, like all because... We ran into each other. So that's why I say God has a plan. Yeah. I'm like, why are you sending me back? That's why. And it's not that he works here, even though we've paired up together with his technology and stuff to be able to change the lives of millions of people. But I, that was my first step to like, oh, shit, I'm supposed to be some kind of speaker, teacher, trainer. I didn't even, I thought I was supposed to be a banker. What the, where the hell is this coming from? Yeah, right? It's yeah. weird how like you look back. It's like, oh, so that's why. I had to go in there. That's, that's where I got my first seminar. My yes. first seminar was with the, you know, the the mixed crowd that could have killed each other at any minute inside a prison. And, and you, you, I think I'm a good speaker because that's a tough crowd to entertain, <laughs> right? When you're telling jokes and trying to educate like people that could literally kill, kill you, you and it wouldn't affect their life one way or another, yeah. that's a tough crowd. And you're you trying know? to get them to like yeah. you too, yeah. Um, before I move on to the next couple of topics here, what is your message to felons out there? Man, I can't get a job. Every time I fill out a job application, I got to put on a check mark that I was convicted of a felon. Because I, I find it's it's very uh, difficult. And I think the laws are just jacked up for felons. I mean, you're an 18, 19 year old felon, yeah. and you have that scarlet letter on your chest I'm for the rest kid, of your yeah, life. I was a kid then. I'm a yeah. grown ass man now. Sure. You know? So what would you, felons are watching this right now, or it's shared with a felon, and yeah. they can't get a job. They can't get financially ahead. Hard enough to get a job. What was your, what's your message to them? So uh, here's what you got to do. First, forget a job. You need a sales job, not, not just any job. No job. Jobs suck right now. Jobs call people non-essential and laid people off last year. Like you need a commission-based sales job. The great thing about commission-based sales jobs is they'll hire anybody. They don't give a shit. You want to sell roofing. You want to sell uh, SBA loans. It's, what's crazy is you can be a loan officer for the SBA and it doesn't require a license. You can't loan. You can't loan homeowners money like from mortgages, but you can do business loans. It doesn't require a license. Doesn't require a background check. So there is a ton of, but it also doesn't pay a salary. So there is a ton of things like selling websites, selling HVAC, selling roofs, selling. Uh, I mean, jewelry. All solar. those things. Solar. Yeah. None of those yeah. require. But, but here's what I would do. 
You say, I don't have sales skills. Good. Go, go to Amazon and spend $30 and get sales books. I wrote one called Elevator to the Top. I wrote another one called Social Media Millions. Those books are going to teach you modern selling techniques. I think they're five bucks a piece on Amazon, right? Maybe free if you get them from Kindle. So it's like, I, I got nothing to gain there. I really wrote those books to help people. Zig Ziglar's written books. Uh, Grant Cardone's written books. Uh, the Jeffrey Gittimer's written books. Brian Tracy. And all those books are cheap. You can get used ones for five or ten bucks, so there's no excuse money-wise. Go read those books and understand those concepts, then get on your phone and make a video of you giving a sales pitch to that company's product. Don't fill out an application, make a video and go, hey, my name's Ryan Stuman, and today I've come by to talk to you about the roof. There was a big, huge hailstorm recently in the area and blah, 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 and you put your pitch on video and send it to them. They don't want an application because they see you're a salesperson and you ain't got to worry about all that stuff. And then if you don't like sales, cool, none of us really do. We just do it because it pays the bills, but then when you're really good at it, you learn leadership and personal development along the way, then you become in, in management and an effective manager, not an ineffective manager that never makes as much money as the sales guy. That's what I would do. Great That's what point I there. did. Yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> That's what I did. You know? It's funny that you mentioned it. He's not a felon, but the guy that did it get a job with me is that guy. Yeah. He says, how to edit videos for a seven-figure squad. How to, how to edit videos for a millionaire. Yeah. <laughs> he sent me a video on how to get a sales yep. job. So that's why he got a job. Here's my question. You, you talk about your faith. You, I mean, you've been sprinkling that throughout this whole conversation. What, what, what was your come to Jesus moment? Well, so one of my best friends is a pastor of a mega church here locally. And I met him in 2003 because a stripper brought me there. That's how great my life was back in the early 2000s. A stripper was like, listen, motherfucker, you need Jesus. And I know just the guy to take you to, you know. So how'd you meet the stripper, though? Uh, in the strip club, you know. <laughs> I, I was just, yeah. it, was, it wasn't a referral. Uh, you know, was just, I met her driving down the street. For this, <laughs> this is how naive I was. This is actually a funny story in retrospect because, like, I'm driving down this. This is so like, I just now, this has just dawned on me because I've never really thought about this, but I'm driving down the street on 75 over here, 2003 or whatever. This cute blonde pulls up in a, uh, and I'm doing the speed limit, so 60 miles an hour or whatever, and she pulls up in an Explorer, and I'm driving a piece of shit green truck that I paid 500 bucks for, right? That, that same truck, right? And so I'm not a mortgage guy yet. I'm still working at the car wash, all this wow. shit, right, okay? And I'm driving probably to another car wash wearing my car wash uniform, and she pulls up next to me and is like, like, okay. world, and I'm like, oh shit. Right. So like, I literally have to hand crank the window down. <laughs> it's power yes, steering yeah, or power like, windows. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I am the power, power, right? And so I'm like, hey, what's up? She's like, uh, hey, my number, take my number down. It's like, fuck, I don't know. You don't have phone back then. Yeah, so you yeah. don't have pen or whatever. Yeah. It's like, shit, you got to remember. remember. Yeah, dude, that was like the big thing, right? And so she's like, you know, eight six seven five three zero nine or whatever the hell it was. And I'm like, oh, you know, dude, that's so cool. Like that chick. I must be, she liked me so much, she pulled me over in traffic. So I called her later that evening, you know what I mean? It's like, hey, I'm, I'm the dude you met in traffic. She's like, oh, you should come see me at work. I didn't realize now that bitch had me in a sales funnel. You know what I mean? She just randomly, I look like a hopeless loser. And she's like, he'll come spend some money in the club tonight. I'm going to give him my number. First of all, she was a hustler. I ended up marrying her for about six months, right? <laughs> so well, shortest marriage in history. She, but she yeah. closed you. Oh, dude. But anyway, so I go... Because I'm thinking, oh, shit, she's a stripper, too. Damn, I got a stripper that likes it. I'm so stupid, right? But anyway, I go there, and then we end up dating for a few months, and I'm a crazy person at the time, right? And she's like, we got to go to – I heard about this church. You got to go to this church. You got so many problems. You So we would go to this church, and then I would sit there and go, damn – pastor saying this stuff to me man like this is like my message you know yeah, what i mean yeah, yeah, yeah. and then we would get in the car and she must have got the same vibes because she would be yelling at me about the shit that he said that i'm not living it was really annoying which is why we end up separating but th by the way i this lady divorced me and then bought a house three doors down from me man she was a nightmare for years uh, bro <laughs> like, and i owned the house it wasn't like i was a renter i could just move out it's like i own this house and she's around the corner like watching me through the blinds every day it's like but you left me just leave was, yeah, my life's wild. But anyway, that's how I got to church. <laughs> so when, when you're when you're looking at what you do today, you say, "God, you know, put these things uh, around my way." So, in, in your opinion, what does it take to be a f person of faith, to be faith based, and actually not feel any guilt of succeeding? Because you know, you see it around the faith based community, the Christian community. Oh, you know, you know, it's better to be broke, man. I mean, you know, God doesn't want you to prosper, and, and some financial myths that people have about finances in the church. Well. <laughs> I think a lot of people are very undereducated when it comes to the Bible. And I think it's because we got a lot of people with hidden agendas preaching stuff from it that they're really not sure about. 
Um, I spent a lot of time in prison and spent a lot of time in solitary confinement. Therefore, I have read the Bible. Bible. <laughs> a couple times. Yes. Four times, yes. Yeah, four times to be exact. Wow. And since 2005, I have read the proverb of the day damn near every day, which would admit that I have read Proverbs over 200 times, I believe. You know, it's funny that you mentioned that. I love Proverbs. I mean, we, we did a series. Of, that was a video for us that blew up uh, how this book of the Bible made me millions. And yep. I got so much heat from the faith-based yep. community. Oh, you should never use the Bible to make money. God didn't save it. They misunderstand the word humble. Have you, most people have never looked up the definition of humble. Humble says of lower self inventory and value than what's actually there. So what people think is bragging to you. See, you and me, we say we make a million dollars and we feel poor because Patrick's our friend. <laughs> right, okay, right, right. But to them, it sounds like we're not being humble. But you and me might be worth five million and we talking one million dollar stuff, which is actually humble because we could talk five million dollar stuff. Yeah. But to the person that doesn't have million dollar problems, it seems like bragging when in reality, me and you yeah. are being humble because we could have said the real number sure. being five. Yeah. And so that's where people don't understand the lord tells you to be humble or the the lord doesn't say that the bible the man writing in the bible says that that, that that's god's will is for you to be humble but it doesn't say be broke Correct. it also Correct. does it says well it's easier for the camel to go through the eye of, of a needle, needle that however what people don't understand is the eye of the needle is not what we sew with. You think people were sewing with needles back then with eyes in them? How, they didn't have machinery. How could they have made something that small, right? Most names come from something else, right? The eye of the needle was where you rode your camel through the crossing of a castle to go into a new town. Remember back in the day, oh, Jerusalem, yeah, yeah, fortified. Yeah. The okay. eye of the needle is the saying that you wrote because it was threaded your camel through there, which is actually where the eye of the needle actually comes from, which meant that it's not in impossible it's just a pain in the ass <laughs> boom and people right. don't understand that so they use these sayings not understanding the context google me i'm not wrong and and pastors say this too because they've never heard the real story of it and they don't understand this because whoever mentored them told them but yeah. listen if i ran a church do i want a broke congregation no we ain't no. gonna build no beautiful building for god with a broke congregation sure. i need my congregation on fire making yeah. money yes you know it doesn't make sense you think when god created us he's like you know what I want this person that, you know what? I created this in my image and I want my image to grow up and be fat and broke and make a bunch of excuses and be useless. That's the image I created man in. Oh, oh drop it. Hell yeah. no. Hell, <laughs> hell no. no. Right. And so people will look at me and they'll say, Stu, man, you cuss a lot. Hey, you know what? I cuss when I pray. Because nowhere in the Bible does it say that we shouldn't use those words, but it says that I shouldn't curse people, which is a big difference. And I'm not doing no voodoo stuff to nobody. Sure. I'm not yeah. wishing for anybody's downfall. And when I get, I just, I raise money for charity. I give money to the church. I create jobs. I, I have been in this business for 12 years. I've been in business for myself since 2005. And I dare you to find one negative review anywhere about me on the internet. Do you know how hard that is when you've had tens of 50,000 clients like I have over the years in the spectrum I have, that's because I operate by God's laws of integrity. Mm -hmm. There is, yeah. no, I mean, literally right. for a guy in my stature that makes my money that's been doing this for this long to not have a single ripoff report, a single salty draw, or a single one-star review, then it's not because I have the gangsters intimidate people, <laughs> right? I promise. Yeah. It's because we operate with integrity. So when I get up there and the things that we've done, if he's like, but you said fuck, I'm gonna be like, well, probably the cool people aren't here anyway you know i don't think that's going to be a problem though you know but but god tells us yeah. to be the best version of ourselves and to reflect him and and i think that in the bible when when jesus goes to the temple and he flips over the table mm -hmm. and he's like verily verily i say to thee like that's how they talk back then right we don't talk that way now like like if if you or me went to that same scenario and flipped that table over. We'd be like, listen up, motherfuckers, right? <laughs> yeah. That It's it's the yeah. same meaning, yeah. right? It's sure. just the, our words have changed. Slang is different right. these days. Maybe, you know what maybe I'm saying? we need to go back to what verily, uh, the yeah, exactly. etymology of what that means. Exactly. Like, but yeah. pe people don't, exactly. You uh, can break down the etymology yeah, exactly, of that and right, probably right. find out it means that. Right? <laughs> Somebody's pissed. Yeah. Yeah. Keep yeah. it real. Yeah. So, <laughs> right. But it, it's, the, it's the same same stuff. So here's what I believe and I'm no preacher and I'm no expert and I don't claim to be any of that stuff, but I believe that you know what the best version of yourself is. You know that you should be in the gym. You know what you should and shouldn't eat. You know where you should and shouldn't work. You know who you should and shouldn't cheat. You know, the things that you're supposed to do is right. And 
if you really want to prove yourself in a relationship with God, you would represent what he wants on this earth at all times, even when nobody's looking. When I got out of prison, I learned really quick to never do anything in the dark that I wouldn't do in the light. I would never say anything to you off camera that I wouldn't put on for the whole world yep. to see on a live yep. video stream. Yep. Like if I, if I said it, then I meant it. And, you know, it's just, uh, I believe in, I may be wrong, yep. you know what I mean? Yeah, but yeah. I, I'm going to live the way that I'm, I believe that I'm going to, uh, yeah. That I'm supposed to live, and, yeah. and if I'm wrong, they'll judge me like they say they will. You Speaking know? of judging, you know, people may look at you right now, hardcore clothes or Ryan Stuman. Oh, this older, rich dude, white dude. Y'all he, just he, heard my damn story. Yeah, right. <laughs> but but they, you know, yeah, YouTube, they might catch yeah. it halfway through the it's episode. white privilege or something. Yeah, shit. right, yeah, exactly. Right. You can, and you, this, and I hope that people watch and rewind this video and, and see it. But what's going on in the world today? America is not the United States of America. Today's veterans day. At the shooting of this video, it's, it's Veterans Day. Yep. And, and, and even the veterans are like, I mean, we're even divided within, even inside the military, this whole woke military type of thing. So what's your opinion on what's going on right now from a faith-based perspective, from an entrepreneur's perspective, from somebody that's creating jobs in a marketplace, that's creating uh, benefits for other people to have better lives? What do you think of what's going on right now and the responsibility of our faith-based community and how important it is for us to understand what's going on because the red, the blue, the Democrats, Republicans are just... Are, are at it, and we are far from united. Well, there's a book that I read in school, and the opening line of the book was, it was the best of times, the worst of times. The book's called The Tale of Two Cities. And most people read that book, or at least know that line. And I believe that there has never been a time in my 42 years on this planet that that phrase didn't sum up where we are. It is the best of times, mm -hmm. the worst of times. Um, contrary to what the media would have you believe, uh, we are living in the safest time to ever be alive. There's not been a terror attack on our soil since 9-11. Uh, kids don't get stolen. You don't see Amber Alerts on your phone. Mm -hmm. Very rarely does that happen, mm -hmm. right? Like, I mean, there's cameras everywhere, crimes down. But yet, there's no money in safety, you know? Sure. there's no Nobody sells you alarm on your home because of safety. They sell you an alarm on your home so you don't get broken into yeah. and hurt because that's what sells the amygdala. The fear. They're invoking the, the fear. fear. And the, the media has got that figured out. And it's not a political thing. So let's just take whether you're Democrat. I'm not a Democrat or a Republican. I liked Obama uh, out of the choices that we had because I believe the two guys that he ran against were complete pieces of shit. Uh, and still believe that today, even though one of them's dead. I still believe that. Um, I like Trump because I believe the person that he ran against is a piece of shit, right? Yeah. Uh, I mean, not a Biden supporter, but that that wasn't my dog, and I the my Clinton, guy didn't win. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm Clinton saying? And Biden, yep. uh, I didn't like Bush. I liked Clinton. So it, you yeah. can't say that I'm one or the other, okay? But Bill, what you Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton. Go, 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 yes, go, go, not Hillary. Go, 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 we didn't like Hillary when <laughs> Bill was president. We all love Bill. We didn't like Hillary because Bill was a wheel and dealer. The guy was a yeah. good. He was yeah. a good president. There's a lot of weird stuff. But I did not him. have intercourse. Yeah, yeah. He screwed up. <laughs> like you know, made a mistake. But uh, but as far as the political stuff he did, a lot of it was good. Not everybody's perfect, but a lot of it was good. Now, the reason why I say that is the real enemy of the United States isn't the far left or the far right or somewhere in the middle or Democrats, libertarians. The real enemy of the Americans is the media. And the media manipulates people. I'm a the marketer. Main, mainstream media. Mainstream media. media. All media. Yeah. Social media, okay. mainstream media, all of it, right? Uh, any media conglomerate that's publicly traded. I'm about to say some really crazy shit here, but just bear with me. I believe the two main things that we have to dismantle in America isn't our government system. It isn't the constitution. It isn't uh, Democrats and Republicans. It's the media. Okay. The, the way that the fact checkers are changing information on social media and the way that the media like Fox and CNN reports lies, right? This changed. For example, um, yesterday, day before yesterday, Kyle Rittenhouse, right? Mm -hmm. was in court. The guy said on the stand on video, my friend David Harris had put it on his page. Who was just in here David, yesterday. Yeah, David Harris, yeah. uh, David's a good friend of mine. Yeah. Like I said, just in here yesterday on camera says, I pointed the gun at him. Right. Sure. And boom, case dismissed at that point. I don't right. even know why they're still going through it. Right. However, the news starts saying that he was the victim and he tried to surrender. The headline was testified that he tried to surrender, which is the, it exact opposite, opposite of what went on. So they're inten so they're intentionally lying to us because mm -hmm. I saw the video, right? And before and all that the context of the before video. all that, I yeah. saw the original damn video and could yeah. see that with my own two eyes before the guy sure. admitted it anyway. Yeah, right. Yeah. Excuse me, a little stopped up. But here's the thing. 
the media is manipulating us and it's making us believe that because you have a different color skin than mine, that you have some crazy ideology or because you came from a different state than me, mm -hmm. that you're some fucking crazy person. And it's not true. The majority of us, 95% of us want the same shit to be left the fuck alone, <laughs> not to have to pay more yeah. taxes and not to have to fall into some crazy right wing extreme or left wing extreme, not, yeah. not to come into some crazy Christianity thing and not mm -hmm. to come into some crazy 36 gender thing, right? We were somewhere in the to leave us alone but here's the and that's all we vote for the dude or the chick that we think will most likely leave us alone because the way the news reports what they do right, right. and and that's just how we are influenced as masses but the the problem is we elect these people thinking they're going to solve racism and, yeah. and monetary problem. All they figure out how to do is tax us right. and write more laws which yeah. is we're in a free country which is the exact opposite of free because it costs money and it takes away freedom and right. it's the craziest shit. So, but we only buy into those people because of the media. There could be fifteen people running for president, like Andrew Yang and Tulsi Gabbard were, ac or Tulsi Gifford were actually pretty good candidates. Both mm -hmm. of them Democrats, mm -hmm. and both of them were probably candidates that. It, like that the Republicans that didn't like Trump would have voted for that would have been in the middle yeah. mainstream solid good people. Yang, Yang Gang, uh, Andrew Yang is a, he's an entrepreneur. Absolutely. So he's a Absolutely. And, and, and she yeah. uh, Tulsi is like a, um, a a doctor or something like that right both both yeah. educated with yeah. experience right yeah. unlike some of the other people that we get in there but the media doesn't give them any attention. So you don't know they're winning. So you don't think they have a chance to win. So you're like shit my person isn't winning yeah. but I need my party to win. So yeah. I got to I think I think Andrew, yeah he just came out with a book he started his own party yeah it's, it's like a, another party I, I, I get dig into that but you're absolutely so what should the a faith based somebody that's aspiring to be a millionaire or somebody that's already a millionaire what's our responsibility right now to how to look at what's going on right there so here's the good news and this is so I told you it's the worst of times part okay, okay? so it's the best of times um, I believe our planet's ran by an algorithm called the force of average. And what I mean is if you're uh, an average person, life's pretty damn comfortable. If you don't want to work out, life's pretty comfortable. If you don't, if you just want to eat a little bit of junk food, not a whole lot and become like a, mm -hmm. you know, extreme overweight, morbid obese person. But if you don't want to work out, you know, if you just want to eat, blah, blah, you can come be skinny, fat, dad, body, that's fine. If you want to make, you know, 50, 100 grand a year, that's pretty easy to make, mm -hmm. you know, in any kind of job. If you got some longevity on it, if you want to, you know, shop at Kohl's, that's pretty fucking, it's pretty easy to be sure. average in America, right? Mm -hmm. If you're below average, let's say you're homeless or you're on Social Security or something like that, the government will give you money. People mm -hmm. will give you money to help you get you to average, right? But the second that you try to break average, then all of a sudden there's a gravitational pull mm -hmm. against you to push you right back down where you belong. You start making money, they raise your tax bracket, right? You start making money, you find out that they tax you on shit that you didn't even know that there was taxes or you didn't even know that you had to get taxed on in the first place, right? Then you find out that people start hating on you. So now all of a sudden you've got like, you know, like friends that you thought were your friends, but now you're successful because you're not average and now they hate you because you lost weight or made money or whatever the right. case is, right? right? So there's all this pressure to keep people average. Really, If you're below average, they'll prop you up. If you're above average, there's a lot of pressure. And so the reason why I say that is the bell curve, the grading curve on this planet is average. Okay. Good. So if they give you statistics, the average family, the yeah. average entrepreneur, median the income. average business, yeah. median, median income. income. It's yeah. all to keep yeah. you because they understand yeah. the algorithm on this planet, right? The game that we play here. So the way to beat that and all it's doing is distracting you. Okay. But here's the thing. Last year, the average, the bar of average went down 30, 40%. So let's say that the median income, and we'll just use numbers here, the median income in 2019 was 60 grand a year for mm -hmm. a family. It probably went down to 30 last year, right? Because everybody lost their jobs, okay? Mm -hmm. And, and uh, let's say that the average body fat of American was 20% in 2019 because everybody stayed home and couldn't work out in 2020. Mm -hmm. It's probably 23, 24% this year. Right. So what I'm saying is since they're taking a few steps back, if you want to get ahead, you don't even have to run anymore, man. You can like moonwalk backwards and, and you're putting huge distance because here's what happens. Once you start gaining a little weight, it's easier to gain more. Once you quit working out, it's easier to never go back. Right. Once you start doing drugs, it's easy to get addicted. Once you start drinking, it's easy to drink every day. Once you start not going into work, it's easy not to go into work until you get fired one day because they realize you're not putting out the output working from home. So this, this grading curve is way lower, which means us as Christians, as entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. as salespeople, as face it's just as patriots, humans, and good, solid people. Yep. We just put in a tiny bit of effort and it's getting us 10 times the result. The problem is the media and the politics and everything would have all of us in this community convinced that it's useless and futile to go do something. 
right? It's like, oh, you can go start your business, but they're just going to mandate that you, once you get to 100 employees, they're just going to mandate that you, there's the force of average. You can build it to 100. Once you're 100, you're great. Here comes the force of average, right? Like, so we're being deterred. We're being distracted that, oh, it's not for you. Success isn't for you. When really it is the easiest time Mm. to become successful in the history of my life. There you go. When when I left prison in 2008, the loan officers would say, oh shit, man, the mortgage industry is falling apart. We're not going to be able to make money. And they were all quit in the mortgage industry. I came out of prison from prison in 2008, July 15, 2008, by August 15, 2008, I'm working in the mortgage business in the worst time in the world doing 70 loans a month. Damn. 70 loans a month. You know what I did while everybody was quitting? I'm like, man, what you going to do with your customers? You're leaving to go sell insurance because the mortgage shit's failing. What are you going to do with your customers? Man, fuck those customers. Well, I'll take them. Yeah, right. Pass me the file, bro. The homeowners. Yeah, yeah. exactly. You, yeah. They still need mortgages yeah. at yeah. some point. You're just going to let yeah. them die, yeah. you know? And yeah. so what happened is, like, again, everybody was quitting, and they were taking steps backwards. Like, yeah. shit, I'm going to eat up market share. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. It's the same thing. We got that same opportunity right now. The average guy's going, oh, man, you know, Biden's making these rules. It just doesn't even make sense to work anymore. He should be like, you're right, buddy. You should give me your business. Correct. I'll buy it from you right now for pennies on a dollar. Let's go. Come on. Yep. That's That's what we got to do. We got to show up as Christians, as entrepreneurs, as patriots, as Americans. We have to show up right now and represent what winning looks like because the losers are loud. But we can let our wins silence them. They'll stop complaining about all this stuff when everybody starts winning and the losers are the minority. See, right now the losers are the majority, so they're mad. They're all pissed off. There's a whole bunch of them. But if we start converting them into winners by winning ourselves and they get on our team, they'll shut up and they'll have no choice but to go to the background. Come on, baby. Mm. Pass the PayPal offering plate. <laughs> <laughs> Pass the Stuman in the house. <laughs> I want to wrap up this interview here because I want our viewers to get good at this because it's something I had a challenge with when I was coming out the military is mm-hmm. I had a bad misconception of what sales meant. You know, your, your Instagram is hardcore closer. And sometimes people feel that when they're closed that somebody's winning. Took advantage of them. And, yeah. Right, and somebody's losing. Yep. And, and so what I've been hearing from you the entire conversation is that there's a win-win situation Everywhere. if you are creating a, a sincere progress because you're walking with integrity and, and people around you are winning. You can always tell how a, yeah, it was funny, a video had a, a fake guru in front of your Lambo. The, that was, uh, yep. You're checking out why. That is, it's, a, it's a great video there. Um, so how does That's somebody... That's customer service rep. <laughs> 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 with, the, with, the, with the bandana. So how, how, would, how would, in your opinion, how would you define a, a career in sales... Mm-hmm. And if somebody's in sales, because it's obviously been the message to you and, and the, the, the people that with inside this episode, how would you start getting good at sales, especially the natural dip- disposition? If there's a fear of public speaking, there's also a fear of rejection. Right. How would you help somebody get good in sales? Well, I have fear of rejection, so I learned how to get good at sales so I couldn't get rejected. And I learned how to make the right offers to the right people, so I'm not going to... Uh, I'm not going to make a a $50,000 mastermind offer to a homeless guy on the street who clearly doesn't have $50,000. So that's, that's a big part of it. But let me, I've spent a lot of time thinking about this. I think I can really solve this question uh, once and for all for your audience. So I grew up in the hood and a lot of us had pit bulls, you know, that was our thing. They, (laughs) they barked at people, they bit people and you know, they kept people out of the house when you weren't there. So a lot of us had pit bulls. They're great, loyal family Mm -hmm. dogs. They are the greatest dogs you will ever have. If you own a pit bull, that dog will put its body on the line and take a bullet for you, your kids, your wife. They're the most loyal, amazing dogs. But if an outsider comes in, it will bite your ass Mm -hmm. and it will not let go until lightning strikes. Right? (laughs) Well, the news always talks about how bad pit bulls sure. are. Every time it bites yeah. one, they say, oh, it tore somebody up. That's because when they do result to violence, which is usually their last resort because their bark usually runs people off, their posturing. When they do result to violence, they are such a big dog that it's usually a, something bad that happens. Well, I say that because salespeople are kind of like pit bulls. We, uh, we're the most loyal, nice, want to serve. You get into sales not because you want to screw people over. You get into sales because you want to serve people. You want to make them happy. You want to solve a problem. But you never know that because the number one enemy of the American people, the media, always does us dirty. You never hear about the sales today on Veterans Day, as you mentioned. I raised almost $10,000 for Elite Meat, which is a veterans operation through Facebook. I gave $1,000. I got some of my friends to give money. Gotcha. I'm a sales guy. How about you can call me? The news, I'll give some money. The news yeah. will never do that report 
on that. The news will oh, not well. show up at my office today going, local man raised 10 yeah. grand for Navy SEALs and Veterans Day. Nice. They will not do that. Uh, but if I steal it. this 10 grand, Come on. if I steal this 10 grand, they'll be here tomorrow wanting to know where that money's at, why I ripped off American veterans and everything else because I'm a sales guy that stole that money. Now, the reason why I say this, there's... 300 million people in America, probably 100 million of them are salespeople. 99,999,000, you get the freaking point of them do honest business, but every time one of us screws up, just like those pit bulls, the media is all over us trying to tell you how bad salespeople are because America loves to hate sales guys. And here's why. You watch the movie about salespeople. Wall Street, mm -hmm. he rips people off. Sure. You Wolf of Wall Street rips people Boiler off. Room. Boiler Room rip people yeah. off. Uh, uh, Glenn Gary, Glenn he Ross does. rip people off. Like the best sales movie of all time is Tommy Boy. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah, and and, and it's Hilarious. it's paired as a comic of a dumbass fat guy, yeah. right? Yeah. But the truth is that is what sales really. If you want to know what sales is like, go watch Tommy Boy. You're put in a position that you're not a sales guy, and now all of a sudden you are by somebody with authority to put you there. In his case, his dad yeah. passed away. He gets a mentor slash trainer, David, that t David Spade, that takes him around. Right. He screws up his first couple of sales and wants to quit because we all suck at it in the beginning. But he, his mentor holds him accountable and sticks to it. And finally, he gets his pitch down. He gets his offer down. He gets the money, saves the factory, gets the girl, and gets to live the life that he wanted to live the whole damn time. And sales is the thing that fueled him. But nobody goes, Tommy Boy is the greatest sales movie ever. Nobody goes, hey, you want to get into sales? You should watch Tommy Boy. Yeah. But they should. Yeah. Instead, they go, you should watch Boiler Room. And people go, I don't want to fucking rip people off. <laughs> I'm not a thief. I, that doesn't seem like an appealing business to me. You want a Ferrari, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah, only reason Chris didn't have a Ferrari is because he couldn't fit in it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> you prove me wrong. That's not like, it's a true story. <laughs> They're last, very small cars. That's it, brother. L last question before I, I so appreciate their your contribution to our channel because this is a this is this interview is gold. We've had a good time. Yeah, man, sure. huge time. Um, you're you're a, you're a New York, New York Times bestselling author. How would you guide and advise somebody right now that has some thoughts, has some ideas, and they want to start articulating and put it down in a book? What would be your fastest process of getting it from here on paper and getting it out? Um, real easy. So check this out. I'll show you exactly how I did it. Love it. And uh, it's way easier than people think. You don't have to be like a, an author, writer type of person. So, see, I just recorded on this. These are all my books, podcasts, everything Ooh. on my phone. I just record. So, the way that I write a book is the right title, and I write the storyline like, okay, did this, did this, did this, did this, here, blah, blah, blah. So now I've got a timeline. Each one of those timelines becomes the chapter, the subject. Mm -hmm. I'm going to record it for five or ten minutes, and I'm going to put a couple bullet points below that chapter, talk on that subject, record it for five or ten minutes on my phone, stop it, do the next chapter, talk five or ten minutes, record it. You can take it and upload it to a website called rev.com, R-E-V.com. It'll translate it for a dollar a minute. Yeah. Then all of a sudden you take that, copy and paste it into a free website called Grammarly, and it'll tell you how to edit everything everything and you just go through and make all the edits and then you copy and paste that shit into a pdf upload it to amazon and you got a book uh, it really is that simple you know and people are like oh it can't be that easy it is i have 13 books i told you i have an eighth grade education with that being said man he just dropped a major gem question is are you going to implement you heard hey, it hey, now you, you know what to do about. ain't nothing to it but to do it's it at it, this it. point 100 you know? percent and by the way, I'm going to take, I want to take that as a personal challenge in the next 60 days. I want to lead by example too, as well. In the next 60 days, I'm going to take that process and by January, 60 days, what, uh, uh, February, uh, February 10th, I will have a book out. Hell yeah. Let's I'm, go. I'm, Lock I'm, it I'm, in. I'm holding you. Can, but I, I got a question. Can you write a little, uh, two cents in there? Yeah, in of course. I'll do a forward, whatever yeah, you want, man. Yeah. Hell yeah. I'd love I'm to in. have your, your guys in inside, man. man. And I don't think this is the last time we're going to be getting together, man. No, you're, now you're, that you live here. You know, <laughs> you're like literally two, you know, two blocks away. We, we do business with uh, National Life Group right next door. Okay. It's one of our insurance carriers. Oh. So if you've gotten value from this, make sure you follow Ryan Stubman here at Hardcore Closer. And uh, what website can they connect you with that? Uh, Hardcorecloser.com. All of our stuff's over there. You'll like that website. There's like 3,000 blogs and videos. It's kind of like y'all's uh, VT Post sure. websites. It's yeah. a ton of comp. Uh, of uh, content and everything over there. So 100%. Make sure you follow Ryan Stuman. And if you uh, haven't seen him in a comedy club, make sure you check him out too as well. He's pretty daggone hilarious on stage and natural as he is right now. He's the same person I would say on stage as you saw him 
right here on this episode. So drop your thoughts, your comments, your feedback in the comment section below. If you haven't done so already, if you're watching this on Facebook, make sure you click like and follow our Facebook page, Money Smart Guy. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you click subscribe. Hit like, by the way, because we're trying to get uh, our likes and our algorithms up here too. So we want to award $5,000 to our church share organization once we cross 150,000 subs. So please subscribe to YouTube channel and uh, hit notifications to be alerted the next time we upload our next episode. On behalf of Ryan Stuman, I'm your Money Smart Guy here from D-Town, Dallas, baby. Till we meet again. Continue to smart. Continue to smart. And be money smart today. God bless you guys. Bye-bye.